Get him up, get him up. Get him up, get him up. Funny how you choose and pick your battles, dude. Keep saying you number one, but I'm on top. Yo, it's done. Dropping styles like napalm. Fake rappers think they so strong. Verses full of hype and always ready for a fight. Spontaneous, magnanimous, cause they can't get close enough to run with us. If you wanna battle, get it hard, get it raw. No emotions, I shake you until your chains fall off. What? Large, in charge, I set the bar high. You running with the big boys now, get up, don't cry. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at the halfway point of today's festivities. Two Sun Bowls down, two more to go. Two champions crowned the Stingrays, champions in both the Juniors and Colts divisions. This one will have a different flavor to it though. We are seeing the third encounter, the third chapter, if you will, of this trilogy between the Bayside Ravens and the Griffith University Thunder here in the women's division. The Thunder finally looking to reverse fortune here as they take on the Bayside Ravens entering in as number one seed for the first time in this trilogy's history. The teams are ready and we might prepare for the Australian National Anthem if I can ask everyone in the stadium to be upstanding for our National Anthem. National Anthem and with that we are ready to look forward to this battle in the women's division the Griffith the University Thunder the number one seed taking on the number three seed the, the Bayside Ravens the Thunder donning their red and black strip and the Ravens of course in the purple black and white coin toss is Almost ready to go. I'm Kenny Andres here for game number three of four Sun Bowls here today from Dolphin Oval and the Redcliffe Peninsula. I'm joined, of course, again by Adam Bolton. Mate, you'll, uh, you've watched this battle unfold over the last couple of years and you've watched these two teams go at each other over 2019. Yeah, thanks, Kenny. It's, uh, this one's way too close to call. Uh, we'll get your thoughts in a second. We're going to head down to uh, center field for the coin toss. Captains, welcome to the Women's Sun Bowl for 2019. Ravens, you are the visiting team and you'll have call of the toss. That is heads and tails. What's the call going to be? Heads. Heads is the call. I will let the coin hit the ground. 
It is a heads. The ravens have won the toss. What would you like to do? Take ravens will be receiving. Which way are you going? If you can turn around and face the direction you're running. Ravens have won the toss and have elected to receive the ball to start the women's sun bowl. Good luck, captains, and all the best to your teams. There was, that was the voice of Mark Louis, who's back in Queensland here to White Hat, the women's sun bowl today. Late changes, saw him moving to the women's game. Saw the captains there, Amanda Ewers, Casey Cubis, Liz Patu, Hayley Peterson for the Thunder, Moran, Peaver, amongst those for the Ravens. And whilst we're talking about officiating crews, there's on your screen and on the big screen here, the team, the Zebra Stripes for today. As I said, Mike Louie leading the charge. Tim Burville, Barbara Johnson, Jason Gambier, Lucas Haynes, Tim Tafuka, Holly Johnson, Clyde Summers, Karen McCormack, Gary Kendall, and Joe Goslin in the booth for today's proceedings. These two teams look very serious, look very prepared, look ready to go. Bolts, you've uh, personally worked with a lot of these players. What do you think the mindset is right now? The Thunder coming in as the favourite for the first time in three years. Yeah, I did a little bit of work the last two weeks with the uh, Thunder's O-line, and I certainly wouldn't say they are treating it like they're the favourites. Um, obviously, we know the results, particularly of last year, they're very, very mindful of that. Um, so certainly looking to make amends, they've been extremely focused this week. Worked with uh, Coach Housen and uh, yours as well, and they are both taking nothing for granted, left no stone unturned, the, all the clues you want, but the preparation's been outstanding from their side. Well, previous encounters, last time these two teams met, week 11, the Ravens came away with a very narrow victory, 20 points to 8. Moran scored three touchdowns in that game. Lisbar 2 was also on fire. Week 5, the Thunder defeated the Ravens, and that was one of the last time the Thunder defeated the Ravens, 30 points to 12. Week 2 saw the Ravens beat the Thunder, 22 to 6. And of course, dating back to last year, Sun Bowl 7, Ravens 46 to 28 over the Thunder in the corresponding game a season ago. A lot of changes to both of these units though. Thunder running from the right. Ravens running left to right. They find a soft spot carry the, in the middle and that's B. Clement who just gets on that ball and will get our offense started on the 36 yard line. Smart move just falling on the ball there. Take the field position. Let's not try and do anything too, too tricky early. Um, risk a turnover or a loose ball or something silly. And I'm going to pay attention to the offense here because the last couple of times apparently I've missed shifts by the Ravens offense and there it is this time, an early <laughs> shift from the Ravens offense. Marissa Hayes now in motion. She'll crack block and they'll try to get Moran involved early and that is a good job there. No surprises. Well, Part better. two. <laughs> taking her down early. The nine taking down the six. I feel as though that's going to be a common theme this afternoon. I think we're going to see that a lot. And as I said, having been around the Thunder this week, and I saw a little bit of the Ravens as well. Um, yeah, they were assuming that number six was going to be out there. In the playoff game, Moran played limited snaps, and they were on defense, mainly to nullify Riley Hodgson, 2019 women's MVP, as this is another carry to Moran, who cuts it back, and eventually the good, solid... Run fits there by the Thunder, keep that to a minimal gain. But yeah, she played very minimal offense. She had a cast on her hand, was playing with a broken hand, I, I think the final <laughs> diagnostic was. But now it looks like she is ready and ready to participate in her traditional position of tailback. Shaman, the new starter at quarterback in 2019. Had a first snap in the preseason, is now starting quarterback in a Sun Bowl. And Moran limited on third down. This could be a three and out here for the Ravens. We saw some excellent penetration there by uh, Tia as well, there that helped um, shut that one down. And then the assistance coming in from Patu as well. And rookie and Ali Tia. So ready filled that gap, quickly became a starter and a key starter at that a defensive tackle. Hayes in motion. And they will pass here. Shaman looking for an open receiver. Looking for B. Clement. Incomplete. There will be a turnover on downs. And the Thunder will start inside Ravens territory. 
think the Thunder will be very happy with that first series. Um, defense looked um, looked solid. Seemed to be swarming to the ball well. They understand that you know they have to fill every gap, and they've got to be super aggressive against that run. Or else, if Moran gets a gap, there's big big problems. Ball in the forty-one. Here comes Amanda Ewers. There might have been a slight question mark of who might start it. It's certainly Ewers. And she'll complete to Cubis. That is a combination that has certainly rode their way to eight wins this season. Nine, obviously, including last week's playoff victory. I'm going to suggest that combination is also one we will probably mention a lot today. Certainly so. Cubis also a proven performer at the Sunball level. She's matched up with Cutress, high snap, and Ewers just has to eat the sack here. Hayes in amongst it, as well as Jasmine Waggett, I think. No, no, sorry, Karen Christian, my apologies. Speed that the Ravens bring off their edge here is, is a handful, and it's something I think is going to really um, dictate how this game goes, particularly on offense for the Thunder. Well, that left edge features last year, Sunball MVP, Isla Cook. Third down and long. They'll run speed option out to Floridas. She stops, pivots, tries to catch people on the cutback. Would have been a wonderful play on first down. Instead on third and long, it gets them back to fourth and seven. Naturally, no thoughts of punting here. They'll go for it. They need seven. Sunshine Lawrence outside, just inside the numbers here on the near side sideline. Taylor Valich in the slot. Ewers looks right though, looking for oh, Cubis, wow. and she got her. And I don't know if my eyes deceive me. That might have been tipped from her own teammate in Taylor Roberts. Wow, that was an incredible ball. Ewers with her first completion. Second, sorry. Good composure there. I mean, the outside rush is coming. She steps up into the pocket. Delivers down the seam. Fantastic ball. I thought it might have been tipped from Taylor Roberts. It might have just got over the hands there of Ravens DB. First down and 10. Ewers right side looking for Valich. Has Valich. And Taylor Valich will be down around the 18 yard line. Thunder looking good early here. In four wide, they go to the flat, they're working Ooh. the flats there, and Cutress delivers a blow as Roberts can't bring that pass in. Something with the uh, Thunder offense that creates issues for, for any defense is just how many weapons that they've got out there. You know, they've got three or four receivers who all can catch and run very well. You've got a good running back, and then you've got a quarterback who can not just throw, but can also run the ball well too. So very, very hard to match up with. Village. And Roberts in the slots. Cubis out. Left side. Florida was going to be used as an option. Ewers is nowhere to go. Was remonstrating for a potential missed call there. No flags on the field. This game flag free so far. Watch there be a flag on the next play. <laughs> the old commentator's curse. Fourth and ten. Sunshine Lawrence in left side, but they're looking right for the height of Cubis. Oh. And that falls incomplete. There is obviously a significant height matchup between Cutress and Cubis, but Cutress is holding her own right now. That being said, when isn't there a height matchup with yeah, Cubis? <laughs> that's, that's, that's part of the, the weapons that the Thunder have. You know, not only they've got very good receivers, they're also you know, quite tall as well, so very, very hard to match up with. The Thunder pretty much grabbed every tall girl in the league. Yeah. So we don't want anyone to be able to cover the height of Cubis. We'll stick them all on our team. I think perhaps the only one I can think of is Scanlon out in Gold Coast. Yeah. Is there anyone who might be able Scanlon, to... Lauren Evans. Yeah, if Evans chooses to play DB. <laughs> Down oh, it's interesting to see what the Ravens come out with here. They get the ball back. Thunder 
turnover on downs on their opening possession. And here goes oh. Moran finding a bit of space, advancing it to the 32. Those are the sort of gaps that in the first quarter are uh, uh, five or six yard gains that in the second and third quarter turned into 50 and 60 yard touchdowns. Yeah, you've got to keep, you can't <laughs> sleep. No. <laughs> she will, the biggest thing is she can, she can break half tackles. Like, yeah. You know, and she can do it all game. Keeps her legs moving well, extremely fast and elusive. Very, she, very hard to she, defend against. Absolutely test the efforts of defense. Along. Another shift here for the Ravens. Left to right go those wide receivers. Uh, a oh. bit of confusion there. Sharman thought she was going to have a back out to the left, handed out to Mrs. Nobody. And she gobbles a tackle there from the entirety of the uh, Thunder defensive line. It's one of those moments as a quarterback when you turn and the running back's not there, you're like, oh no, <laughs> you know what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, trying to make something up. Third down. Another shift from the Ravens. Same shift. That's the last play. Perhaps they're just going to go back to it and make it actually work this time. Nope. And they're going all pass. Ooh. She gets it off into the direction of Karen Christian. Had plenty of thunder hands in the passing lane, though. Incomplete. We've got fourth down. Good rush there from Newell. That's uh, somebody I think we need to keep an eye on today as well, seeing um, what she did at practice the last two weeks while I've been there. Very, very difficult to block. Ravens sending Hayes in to punt back deep to return. I think that is Peterson for the Thunder. Good connection there from Hayes. Peterson, it's out of reach. Oh. Matter of fact, get oh. McAfee on the phone. There's one for the brand. That's a for the brand punt. Kozo's going to be proud of that one. Marissa Hayes works diligently on her kicking game, both kickoffs oh, and punt. Hey, big difference makers, look at this. We're starting from the six. And it's plays like this that sometimes when you've got a bit of a stalemate going, where you've got this uh, this this tug of war of possession, where it's turnover and downs, turnover and downs, around the middle of the field, something that just makes the offense a little more uncomfortable, such yep. as starting from field, your own six. Field position pressure is a 100% thing, particularly in a tight game. Yeah, all of a sudden you, you get backed center. up. <laughs> you, oh, I'm no, sure no. Understand. All of a sudden you're focusing a little more on your snaps, mm -hmm. knowing that any of those could be the cost of two, maybe even six points. Ewers, though, Ooh. has to hold that on wisely. Gets a grip on the ball, sensing the contact coming. They're running those, uh, those speed options on the outside there with the speed that the Ravens have got out there. Very, very difficult to convert those. Second down. Went back to the huddle, had to think about it. Three receivers out to the right. Ooh. Oh, Kevin oh. Christian getting a hand on the ball and the Ravens. I think they've come up with that. Think they got up with it. I'm seeing incomplete yeah, no. signed from Whoa. all the officials. Though, now I'm seeing the, well, I saw the sideline judge say incomplete, and now I'm seeing first down signaled at the center field, and I think that'll this be the case. This could be huge. Mark Louis with the official call. Okay, regardless which way this goes, you can probably see the red flag come out.
Yeah, we some technical difficulties here. What are we trying to get? Just call out to the crowd, and obviously you guys at home. After further review, the play is ruled as a com completed turnover. First down, Ravens. There it is. Wow. That will be an intercepted, though I've never heard the term completed turnover. <laughs> he wanted to say completed pass, but it wasn't. It was the defensive interception. Not that you can have an offensive one, but uh, yeah. Now, I didn't actually catch who was at the bottom of that, but it was a heads-up play. It was batted down by Karen Christian at the line, and threw a sea of hands that went before a defensive lineman for the Ravens. Got that ball taken away. Moran, can she break enough tackles? Looking for the edge. Haley Peterson Ooh. races her to the sideline, and then she takes a hard a Liz Patu shot over the far sideline on the eastern stand. And there's one of those that's, uh, you talked about before in terms of, you know, the game of field position and the pressure they can put on. And, you, you know, now we flip the field. Well, you, you were just talking about field position pressure. Mm -hmm. And there it is. I do love, though, if you're running, you're running back running to the sideline or any sort of ball carrier, you look at your running back, uh, you look at the tackler. If it's not Liz Batu, you know that impact is coming real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Moran again. I go back to her and she's stuffed at the line. Nelly Tia came again. up with that stop. She's maintaining a gap assignment very well there. Took away the cutback line. I love good defensive tackle play. What the? Oh, it's the first quarter already. Yeah, the first. Uh, on screen clock, a little behind there. Thought we had 25 seconds left. Mark Lewis says, that is end of one. Scored nil all here. Thunder and Ravens not separated on the scoreboard yet. Another team able to get on the scoreboard. The Ravens knocking right now, however. They'll have to wait until the start of the second quarter for the next shot at the end zone. Kenny Andres, Adam Bolton. Yeah, calling the game for you in the 2019 Women's Ensemble. Ravens are looking to go three straight. As the Thunder look to earn their first one. Denied the last two years by the ladies that stand opposite them today. Play has been whistled back in, start of the second quarter. Peeva's in the backfield with Moran. The give is to Christy Moran. Who jump cuts past the first defender and Laura Newell before the rest of the troops come in. I'll tell you what, that's something the Thunder is doing really well right now. Mm. Swarming to the ball very quickly. Keep me honest, I mean, even then she makes what two people miss in the backfield, which you know, credit to the Thunder for getting that pressure in there. And then still the Thunder have got help coming to make sure she's not, you know, not breaking that through for the touchdown. Even though with a tight end opposed to full back. Trips out to the right and they'll be used to creatively block. Moran's looking for the pylon. She gets there. The Ravens get on the board first. 6-0. Christy Moran there from six. That's just great play, play calling there. Using the bunch formation to lead block. And just getting Moran on the other side and a foot, using the angle basically. Just foot racing speed to, to get to the corner you know, before the defense. Shouldn't they be going for two here? Well, I haven't seen the Ravens attempt a PAT in the last two seasons. So. <laughs> uh, with Gerard Fitzpatrick back on the sideline, I wouldn't put well, anything past them. Marissa Hayes does have a couple PATs on the board. I think they're mainly at state level, though. For counterplay here for the Ravens, well defended uh, by the Thunder. No one fooled. 
Very well filled and covered there by the Thunder. And a couple of messages in. Wonder what the atmosphere is like here at Dolphin. I will tell you what, it's certainly building, especially as <laughs> most people have moved to the shaded side <laughs> of Dolphin Oval. One of these stingrays, I think the juniors, had a specific cheer squad going on in one section of the stadium. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think there's a couple of uh, Thunder cheer squads here too, if you just look out the window. You know they'll get noisy once uh, they start moving the ball. And I still remember the scenes of last year of the Thunder winning the, the men's Sun Bowl there and seeing the Thunder <laughs> component of the... Uh, of the crowd. The crowd, absolutely losing it. With the success of the uh, the punt earlier, what are the chances they go on side here just to try and get a bit cheeky? Well, the Ravens do this interesting with their kicking game. Well, I don't think it's intended to be on side, but they, they do try to get right in behind that first line. Smart. It's almost like a one of my relationships. It's like, oh, oh, I want the benefits of <laughs> the potential onside kick, but I don't want to commit to it. I didn't know where that was going. My point ah. proven. So the, the option's on there, but also field position isn't too bad. They end up setting the team up around the 30-odd, and they minimize return risk. So. There's some, there is some onside option. It's very similar. You get a little bit more air under the ball to chip it into that back space and with the aim of one of your two outside gunners getting down there as fast as possible to try and go for the jump ball or try and, you know, get into the middle there. Um, see it run a little bit at the college level and definitely the high school level. 6-0 now, the Thunder looking to level and possibly take over with a successful conversion right now. Two turnovers and downs and an intercept in the last three possessions. And the speed of that Ravens run defense is just stifling at the moment. There's Florida's proven to be productive though, particularly if she can get to the outside. Yeah. I said it I think back in the game over at Kitchener Park has got one of the sickest spin moves yeah. in all the leagues. She'll try to block Isla Cook on this play. They try to get a bit of a screen going to Taylor Roberts. Hayes was there on the coverage. So that was with, uh, so third and 11. And now they've got two in the backfield, two receivers out to the left. Ewers is going to take it herself though, and that's been part of the bread and butter of successful Thunder offensive days. Flags are back, are down on the 33. Given what it was thrown, I'm not sure whether it's going to be illegal formation or offside. The offense had five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. It remains the third down. One of the most common penalties of 2019. Five in the backfield there. Someone not lining correctly there. You'd have the three offensive one on the line and then two skill positions. Yeah, so it looks like they've declined the penalty. It makes more sense like, to take the five-yard penalty and still get the third down again versus taking fourth and five. And on fourth down here. Ewers looking for Roberts. She's got it. Great spin and catch. 
She's got the first by yard. A little bit of acrobatics there, I'm sure, by Taylor Roberts. Great play call there. It's a nice little out route from the slot. Get past the sticks, you get the first down. And I tell you what, I think that's that shows significant improvement there for Mewers. I think in previous years, she hasn't been willing to take the flats or take the short underneath stuff as consistently as she's so far proven today. Let's see if that lasts the whole game. Because that's where the Ravens are giving her. And so Zolale in the backfield. Didn't get the handoff though. Ewers kept it. Picks up three, maybe four. Another good read there as well, because these are the sort of things you've got to stick out early to set up other things, or just in general, as the defence starts to wear down throughout the game, you know, those seams that go from those four yard gains to five, to eight, to ten, to, to, to the bigger chunks of, 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 uh, of yardage, but you just need to stick with that early on in order to set it up, because if you don't, you, it's going to limit what you do later on. Ball at the Ravens, 44. Short pass out from the left Ooh. to Alale. Incomplete. I want to bring up a third down though again. Ewers proving she's willing to take the underneath options. Still pretty early in this game. Five minutes left in the second quarter. 6 0. The Ravens currently lead following a five yard Christy Moran rushing touchdown. With those underneath passes, it gives her to the old uh, John Gruden analogy. Just keep taking it until they take it away. I'm going to keep giving it to you? Cool. You keep taking it. Don't go break, taking a profit. Third down. Quick pass over the middle. Oh. The Cubist juggles it. Gone. Now breaks the tackle. She's gone. Marissa Hayes is chasing. She won't Not get close get enough. Cubist shows fantastic concentration and then uh, shows off the Jets. Uh, it's a gr that's a great round, great ball by Amanda. Finds her in the soft spot of the zone and then foot race to the end zone, but you're not going to catch Cube, it's way too fast. She's got those long strides. That's a great timing route. 43 yards. I'm just going to see what they pull out here for the two point conversion. A lot of space out to the left there. And again, they fake. They are going to that left. Trying to get that oh. offload, if you will, to Floridas. Floridas <laughs> can't beat <laughs> the scrambling defense there by the Ravens, despite the late pitch from Ewers. The score is locked up 6-6. Six, six. And I was going to say, conversions I thought would be a huge part, or at mm. least a huge advantage for any of the teams that could consistently land their conversions here. How many times have we seen it come down to a two-point game? In fact, the last time these two teams played, it came down to a two-point game there. Uh, well, so far we've seen, you know, zero from two for the game. Yeah, the Ravens won because they managed to convert one of their two-point conversions. Today could come down to the same thing. Yeah, it was three touchdowns apiece in that game. Be interesting to see what the uh, Ravens do here to, to respond to that. Quick response in the grand scheme of things. Carey. One offensive lineman of the year. Onside kick attempt. Fielded nicely by the Ravens. Yeah. Good awareness by the front line there. It is interesting in the women's division, I think a lot of the premier teams, you know, the reality is in the women's comp right now, we don't have women who can boom it down and get touchbacks on a regular basis. Hayes isn't too bad, Fuller's not too bad um, over at the Gold Coast Stingrays, uh, but no one who can reliably keep booting that thing down yeah. there. So it's allowed teams or it's forced teams to get creative how they want to do it and crunch the numbers, do the maths and saying, well, we may, try, we may as well try outside so kicks a little more frequently because, you know, those kicks are landing around the 20, getting returned back to the 35 anyway. Yeah. So You're right. If, you, if you're struggling to get the ball consistently deep or, you know, down towards the goal line, then, yeah, it certainly changed the analytics in terms of, you know, success rate of those onside kicks. Time out here to the Ravens. Yeah. 
talking to Coach Fitzpatrick during the week, I know he's got a lot of stuff up his sleeve. A lot of tricks up there. Also worth noting though, the head coach today, well, head coach this season, Pete Davies, in his first ever as a head coach. It's an incredible effort. But what is also interesting, he has been not too proud to bring in help when offered. Coach Fitzpatrick has said the winner of the last two Sun Bowls on the sideline there. And in fact, every single head coach of the Ravens women's program in history is currently on that sideline. <laughs> Andy Miller, who, who took over the program in 2015 in its inception, is on there. Obviously, Fitzpatrick is there uh, calling the offense today, I believe. And Pete Davis, obviously, the current head coach. So every head coach in Ravens women's history currently on the sideline. We might see an illegal motion illegal being called shift, here. I think. And they, Thunder um, very well could just decline this penalty. Oh, I think you do, given the outcome of the play. What do you, you trade it down for about two yards? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Coach Housen's pretty quick on that by the looks of it. Illegal motion. The offensive player was moving forward at the snap. That penalty is declined. Second down. And with the Ravens, those that could happen again at some point today. I mean, they have a lot of these motions that lead into crack blocks. And it's very tempting, especially if you're, the snap's happening behind you, which logically will a lot of the time, it can lead to those uh, sneaky forward motions, accidental or not. Shade Kelly, I think, who raced away for the game when he touched down two weeks ago. Getting that ball back inside the original line of scrimmage. Still got third down though. She looks so dangerous with the ball in hand, like we saw that two weeks ago up on the Sunshine Coast against the Stingrays for that game winning touchdown and just there as well. Like really, she was one sort of half tackle away from breaking that and taking that the distance. Third down. And just to mention the fourth member on that Ravens coaching staff. Like Summerfield joined him this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Former yeah. Stingray. The experience he brings is just incredible. Still remember the Sun Bowl he put in back in 2015. I think I think it was 2015. Very close to winning MVP. Ended up going to Damien Malloy. Had two picks in that game. It's a good year that one. Five yard penalty. Yeah. Still the third down. Not oh, full stop, sorry, uh, delay game. 2014, I think, in fact, it was. Still a good year. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> third down in 14. And Whoa. oh, how about the blitz dialed up oh. by the Thunder? And there's Newell. Newell. Just destroyed that offensive and line. Doesn't she look comfortable here in her second year? Came oh. as a rookie a season ago. Played on the offensive line and defensive line, has been transitioned more to a defensive line starter. And, you know, a lot of those nerves, a lot of those moments of hesitation no. quickly left her and is making a lot more decisions. She took, took reps on the O-line this week and looked very, very good. The Ravens get on with this quickly. Hayes with another good-looking punt. Oh, yeah. And, but it is returnable here for the dangerous Haley Peterson. Plenty of space down that... There's another play you do Western not want to give Zorro. space to. Yeah. <laughs> Dangerously fast. In many ways, a bit of a forgotten lady as of recent years. Well, obviously known at the running back position to the very first start. I still remember how she ripped up the league in those first couple of years. Oh, her and Moran were just untouchable. And then she took, uh, took a little bit of time away, I believe, and then returned and now as a safety and returner specialist. Thunder will be keen here to build off the momentum of that stop in the last drive. Yeah, that return got them all the way to halfway, and now the Ravens are going to use their second time out of the half. Ravens. This is the Ravens' second timeout of the half. Someone's messing with the Mark's audio. And then we've talked about the Ravens coaching staff on the flip side. Technically, in their first Sun Bowl as a head coach, <laughs> Amanda Ewitz. Obviously, Kel's still there, and Kel's still very much a significant part of that coaching staff there. But 
he was talking to me about it. Like he had to make the decision to make the official title Amanda, given he had to take over the Colts program this year. Yeah. He said that was going to take his attention as a head coach. So he needed someone who would be able to properly sit as the head coach of the women's side as he would be flipping between the two of them. So still very much part of this coaching stuff, but he's trusted not only his quarterback, but his partner to handle the head coaching role. And she's done pretty good. Won coach of the year yeah. in her first year as a player coach. Here it is. Hands off to Floridas. Good first cut. Now that leads to a gain of close to four yards. Solid gain on first down. But yeah, having been you know, at the Thunder the last couple of weeks, sort of helping out, it's very much um, Amanda's team in terms of the coaching perspective. She's putting together the session, she's running it. Kel's running the defense and, and certainly having his input. But yeah, there's no question there that you know, she, she's running the show. But it, having someone like Kel there puts the player coaching position, it makes it viable. As this pass is almost Ooh. intercepted by Hayes. Trying to get something there to Roberts. I mean, play coaching is one thing, but if it's truly just you, it is close oh. to impossible. Yeah, I agree. But if you've got someone who reliably can be handling a lot of the other stuff on the sideline, you know, substitutions or whatever coaches have to handle when they're not on the field. It's the experience that Housen brings to the table. And you've seen it before with Malloy. Yeah. And Malloy had to do it. One of some ball as a player coach. Ooh. And this pass intended to Cubis. Candace Swaysland, who's returned to the lineup, was there. there he he that one, wasn't she? <laughs> walked away with a bit of sass as well. Hasn't Has been a, a missing feature in this defense for the last couple of games has been in Japan with Ike. Over the last month or so, missed week 12 and the playoffs. Lucky for her, her team got the job done. Now she's able to compete here at her safety position in the Sun Bowl. Fourth down, Thunder going for it. High snap, Ewers. I don't think it was designed for that. I saw Florida just going out for that speed option look. Nice step. Took that option away from him, and that'll be a turnover and downs. Yeah, so I mean, so important for the timing of the play is that that centre quarterback exchange, whether under centre or in the in the shotgun snap. So something like a bobbled snap or a high snap like that, you really can throw off the timing of the play, and particularly when you've got a really fast defence across from you, they can create some problems. Last possession. Todd now in as a wide receiver. And they'll give it to Moran, but Ooh. they might have worked it out. Ooh, <laughs> look at the, the end of that play. Look at the bodies flying in as soon as someone's got a hand on Moran. They, they know well and truly what Moran can do to you. Oh, yeah. You know, I think they've probably seen enough film of one on one tackling attempts and seeing what happens if you don't stick it. Two minute warning is upon us. Time out. Officials, time out. This is a two minute warning. Two minutes left in the park. Along with that audio, we're starting to get a sense of this wind significantly picking up. I'm trying to look at the trees that opposite us. The Flemington Rocks doesn't give me a great idea of where that wind's blowing. One tree's blowing one way, the other tree's blowing the other. And the rain cuts back. Now this could be dangerous. Has got part two ahead of her. Cuts inside her, but Cubis comes back, as does part two. Part two, a woman on a mission to not let Moran pop off. Good vision there by Moran to bounce the ball out like that. I mean, she's just a, so close to getting the corner there. You know, Cubis holds on for dear life there. But, um, you know, it's one of those situations where if you don't have help coming, she soon breaks those tackles. I've got to say, I'm impressed with how the Thunder has limited Christy Moran here in the first half. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. 
Third down and nine. Don't think that footage of the trees helps as much in terms of... Yeah. <laughs> it does show you how much the winds are oh, shaking the... Uh, Floor around us, Moran on the pitch, flags thrown in, Moran's got distance, Moran has got Peterson to beat, can't do that, flags are down though, suggest close to halfway. Suggest it's coming back based on what that's thrown. So that could be a holding against the Ravens. Holding, 83 on the offence, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, it remains third down. Brooke Gibson, centre there, caught in a hole, moving back significantly now, they should, into that play would have seen them close to the red zone and now instead they've got a third down and 20 all the way back at the Third and 36. Just over a minute remaining. Oh. Shaman can't handle the snap. Looks like she's done enough to recover it though. It was mid pirouette. I'm we'll trying to take that one. And oh, the Thunder got awfully Very close, close to there. recovering that one. Those are the moments that can dictate a game, aren't they? Time out. Thunder using their first. Not a bad call. Stop the clock with 48 seconds to go on fourth down. Try and get the ball back and put some scoreboard pressure on just before half time. Big shout out to uh, Oscar Lopez over in Los Angeles. Obviously, I think he shared us onto all his big podcast networks, extending that vision out to his worldwide connections. Obviously, he runs a very successful podcast regarding women's football. I'm always tuning into the action here down in Gridiron, Queensland, in our women's divisions. Very stoked to have his company. Hayes almost blocked on that punt. Someone Ooh. might have even got a finger to it as well. That's caught by Ewers out of bounds at the Thunder 42. Maybe the 43. Well, we go. The timeout, timeout pays dividends. Get some pressure on the kick. Now starting with excellent field position. And you saw Hayes there. Obviously saw somebody in the corner mm. of right. Rotates the leg and gets that out of the way of the would-be blocking arms there of Newell. The screen there, that's Alex Aarons for a second. Why hasn't she got into football shape? She's really putting a lot of muscle, and you can see that paying dividends in 2019. Ewers shapes left and throws right. Oh. That needed to be that was a brave pass there from Amanda Ewers. Had to stick in the pocket, sell the fake, and get it out to the other side, and she did so perfectly. Yeah, did a great job there standing up to the rush. Look at this. No, she's going to get hit. Might as well make sure that the pass is on, on point. Good game there. And has been limited to offense. Has played both sides throughout 2019. She's been proven to be fit enough. Um, I was talking to both her and her trainer and, and Kel, and they wanted to make sure that I did acknowledge Paul Knight, um, who's been obviously been who was in GQ for a long time on the, for the Ravens, coaching both men's and juniors, playing in men's, but obviously now a uh, I uh, strength and conditioning coach and Amanda's been working under him throughout 2019 and credits a lot of her physical work to that man. Shout out to Paul Knight. Do a catch up dinner with you soon. 81. Can't remember your, your business, sorry, Paul. <laughs> 81 Lantern, I think it is. Shout out to you, Paul.
You now I'm seeing the first of the men's rhinos coming out of the tunnel for warm ups. That's Lizalale in the left slot. Matty was under pressure though, has to retreat. Ooh. It's facing, it's never a good. <laughs> oh, they've blown whistles. No dramas there regarding fumbles, but it's never a good sign when you're facing your own goal line. No, not at all. I think we've got a, a legal formation call here, so I imagine that'll get declined. Bob Johnson on the officiating crew. To go officiate the Women's World Cup. Copy is back. Illegal formation. The offence at five in the backfield. The penalty is declined. It will be forced down. Timeout has been taken by the Ravens. This is their last timeout of the half. There's a Ravens taking the last time out here. 17 seconds. 6-6, six, six, the Thunder. Hoping they can dial up something here. To be the last team on them. Not to get a score on the board before half, I should say. I think they're being fourth down. They're probably expecting a punt, so I wouldn't be surprised if they've got something drawn up for this situation, something a bit tricky to try and get a, get a score before the half. Not a bad time to fake, obviously if it's unsuccessfully be turning the ball over with the Raven, uh, the Thunder, your own 37. Of course Moran's capable of scoring from anywhere, as is a couple of these Ravens players, shot at Kelly, shot around a 50 yarder two weeks ago. So I guess it's how much faith you have in your defense there. I suppose something you do have up your sleeves, the fact the Ravens have used all three of their timeouts, so it does probably limit what they can do if they were to get the ball back here. They have sent their offense back on the field here on fourth down. Fourth and 16. Ramos is the last time out. And the officials. Uh, equipment issues. And this part two will jump on the field there. Is lose a lolly. Has to get a mouth gut in. Fourth and 16. Ewers. Both backs used to give her a bit Ooh. more time. She was trying to hit Roberts. Pass sails above her though. Sway's land on the coverage. That's a turnover on downs. That play took five seconds off the clock. We've got 13 seconds here for the Ravens from the Thunder 37 to see if they've got a play that can cover 37 yards and extend. I'm oh, sorry, grab the lead before the break. 6-6. Six, six. 13 seconds remaining in the half. And another equipment time out here. Hunter now jumps on for Tia. Those chin straps and mouth guards. Some women currently losing their bits. Shaman, quick drop. Throws and oh. Cubis has got the ball back. Haven't seen a whole lot of that from her, but she breaks on that ball beautifully to add an that interception to her stat sheet. That ball was dropping off with the wind. Just did very well to that. It's almost like she plays receiver. <laughs> well, the first time we've seen a receiver pick off a ball today, Jaden Palladin ended up playing defense for the Stingrays and the Colts Sun Bowl. Picked off a beautiful pass in the end zone. And I just going to see how much 
the wind picks up this pass here. Just, almost looks like it adds 10 pounds to the ball. Now the Thunder with an opportunity to try to hail Mary it up. Ooh. But now the Ravens have oh. stripped that. Has their time on the clock. There will be two seconds left. So in the space of 13 seconds, we've had two turnovers. Well, technically three if you want to count the turnover and downs as well. <laughs> You're right. Three turnovers. All under 15 That's seconds. It's been an incredible 15 seconds of football. Someone's... <laughs> Someone said they were going to leave at halftime, and <laughs> that was 15 minutes ago. They're trying to get that ball to Shade Kelly, and despite the defensive excitement, and that should be enough to see us to the half with the scores unchanged. That is halftime. There's the official call halftime here, Dolphin Oval. Here in the third Sun Bowl today, the women's division, the scores are leveled at 6-6 between the, the Griffith University Thunder and the Bayside Ravens. Both teams will head to the break with a level playing field here in the second half. Kenny Andres, Adam Bolton, you're watching the 2019 Gridiron Queensland SEQ Sun Bowls from Dolphin Oval. We'll be back on the other side of halftime. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Halftime is over. These two teams have re-energized. And are looking to half number two to separate themselves and earn the title of Sunball Champions 2019. The scores are level six all. A touchdown to Moran for the Ravens and a 43-yard slant to Cubis. Got them on the board. This one's fielded on the full here by the Thunder. Was returnable. Sunshine Lawrence and tried to as taken down on the Ravens side of halfway. There's that variation of the onside I talked about. And there it is. Kenny Andres, Adam Bolton bringing you the action thanks to live stream in Brisbane. And Dolphin Oval. There's Kelhausen on the sideline. See, Paul Mills has now moved himself to the roaming camera roll on the field. <laughs> Wondering how someone got so close to Kel. Ewers, speaking about people who got close oh. to Kel, Ewers fumbles this pitch, but it is safely recovered Liz by Liz Patu. Great start to the second half. Coming in as her shortstop, sweeping that fumble up. It'll be interesting to see the adjustments that are made here. The first half was so close between both teams. I think uh, this is one of those ones where the halftime discussions really will make a difference in the outcome of this game. Absolutely, adjustments could and should be key here. Now, a new formation here for the Thunder. Trips out to the left. The slot is on the line. Ewers, trick play. She faked to go on the sideline. Direct snap to Liz Patu, who bounces off some Raven tacklers. Now cuts it back and is down at the 25. How about that? The old, you know, different names for a wrong ball, the old wrong play, the old walk to the sideline. Her and Kel had been probably practicing that every night. Sold it to perfection. And Tuesday night was at their practice. Amanda said they had a couple of things that were running, <laughs> but they weren't doing it till Thursday night when I wasn't there. Fair so. play. <laughs> there you go. Ewers hands off to part two. Oh. They're no longer oh. limiting her to the defensive side of the football. Just see that first hit. Oh. <laughs> nah, that's a truck stick. Let's do this again. This will be a great angle. Power play here by the Thunder. Defender's in the right spot. <laughs> like, you can't do she much more than that. into the back of her own blocker <laughs> and gave her blocker a pancake. Oh... Outstanding. Well, look, they did not use her on the offensive side of the football in the first half. 
clearly the game plan was to wear the Ravens down and save her for the second half, right when they would need probably a key separator. And lo and behold, here we are, third quarter, 6-6. Six, six. Thunder on the move, two by two runs, has them inside the red zone. And Ewers will keep oh. it, they keyed on Liz Batu, Ewers looking for the pylon, oh. stretches out and she has got the touchdown! What a run there from Amanda Ewers! You just see the receiver block, I think it was Casey Cubis, at the end of this play. Just watching the outside of the screen here. Cubis coming in and getting the block on this safety. And the extra effort here, Ooh. That block from Cubis is enough that's sprung probably what would have been a t you know, the stop about the six to, looks like, yeah, we've got a score. Oh, jeez. Mike Louie's got his finger on the speaker button. Nope, I thought it might have been second, I might have been checking something. He was got awfully close there. <laughs> Thought for a second that maybe we'd be coming back. Oh, hang oh. on. There she is again. Now that we've got a flag on the near side. Now I just want to double check. That was in fact the two point conversion. I, th I think it was first, first and goal actually. I don't think they gave it to her in the end. I think that is the case. I saw the touchdown signals initially, but I think. That wasn't on the two, so... Illegal formation. The offence had five players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. That's a coach killer. It remains first down. So, that answers our question. Wasn't a touchdown. Score remains 6-6. Six, six. They got to the one, and ultimately, far that, based on that last replay we saw, was probably the right call. Yeah, and absolutely. Now that penalty moves them back there. They thought they got it the second time round. False start though. Cubis oh. though on the slant beats Swaysland from six yards out. Grabs her second touchdown of the afternoon. Just to get a homer opinion here, that pass protection there was outstanding. Amanda had plenty of time back there. He was has time to scan, scan, step up, bang, deliver the strike. I'm trying to find the number of that left. God, I think it was Hannah Wiles doing a great job on the left side of the line. Now, officially for the two-point conversion, mm. we need much longer arms than that. Mm. Peeva takes her down. The lack of conversions from these teams continue. 12-6. I'm still sticking to our point earlier, Kenny, that the two-point conversion uh, part of the game could be what separates these teams at the end. Excellent drive there from the Thunder to, to come out and score first. Um, clearly made some great adjustments in, in, the, in the locker room. Coming out with uh, Patsy at running back and getting some great yards there and then uh, finishing off with the pass game. Oh, by then, Pot 2 had done enough to be enough of a threat to spring Ewers for those big runs there that almost got into the end zone the first time. It was denied by a penalty the second time, then they go to the passing game the third time, and reliably, um, Casey Kubis there was to pluck six points in the air. This one's put in the air, and it's caught by Hayes. Part of the frontline hands team. I thought that ball might have been taken away from her for a second. Thought that came out there. Well, the thing is, Kerry's not pulling the old kick the ball and getting the high bounce. They're kicking into the ground to get the high bounce. She's kicking it up there for the Raven frontline. They can fair catch it if they wish. Yeah. I know Kerry's coming back from a leg injury, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's playing part of big kicking game strategy today as well. I like the threat that Patu now gives the thunder in the run game or in the offense, because even if you put her out there, even if you're not running the ball, they've got to respect that, that she could run the ball. 
Yeah, she's not slouching on her defensive duties. Here she is at inside linebacker. Shaman still a quarterback. Finds a nice gap to run through. Slices up the Thunder defense there for eight new yards. It's a nice run there. It's a good, uh, looks like there's an adjustment they've made in terms of the aggressive nature of the Thunder are flowing to Moran. And Ron gets them to the Thunder 35. Second and two. Charmin tries to hide count. Pitches now to Moran. It's behind her though. Puka Collar there to meet her immediately. Moran's done a good job there to pull that in though. It can go so wrong so easily there. That fits in front from Excellent King. Thunder. Excellent King time there by Carla as well. Yeah, Carla. Moana. Of course, we talked about part two. And then obviously the strong girls in the middle doing a good job to take the dive game out of it. Yeah. They are happily spilling everything to the sideline. Currently, the outsides are doing their job. Moran now in at uh, quarterback. And they'll, her and Sharma just swap positions. Moran is saying that. Let's just cut out the middle, man. And that's good for seven yards. That's his fourth down situation far more palatable, doesn't it? down now. Shulman will stay on the field. Moran comes off. And now we might see a timeout. Raven's going to take their first of the second half. And given that adjustment there for Moran at going in at QB, um, I think the Thunder adjusted fairly well to that. Like They didn't panic They've seen it before. I mean, they ran this in the Sun Bowl last year. Um, so, you know, even though you know, they, got, what, they got eight yards or nine yards off it, um, you know, that's the sort of play they could easily, particularly someone like Moran, just gash you for huge yards. So I think they, they adjusted fairly well to it and flowed very well to the ball. Mm -hmm. Just based on the past two Sun Bowls, I'll tell you what, both the past two Sun Bowls have featured a trick play at some point. Mm -hmm. Fourth down, looking at one, two, three yards. Inside Thunder territory. Well, you, you get good odds. You get pretty short odds on it being <laughs> on, on the cards, I reckon. I'm just saying. No, I reckon you're right. We've seen halfback passes. We've seen reverses. We've seen reverse passes. And already talked about how uh, Coach Fitzpatrick doesn't mind digging into the old Madden playbooks every now and then for something different. Fortunately, on the flip side, like Summerfield for the Ravens isn't just consistently pressing engage eight. Yes. <laughs> Todd now moves out to the right slot. They've got the three minutes of line with the tight end to the left. Shade Kelly in the backfield with Shaman. They'll give to Kelly. Kelly has got hands on her immediately. I think it's Puka Kala. Whatever they had planned, it was shut down real quick. That's excellent discipline off the edge there. And the Ravens now, they're going to have to find a way to take these edge rushes out of the picture. Yeah, absolutely. Sort of hitting with their own pause because that's something that the Thunder are so focused on this week was the, the edge rusher that the uh, Ravens bring. Now it's also going the other way as well. Well, here's the thing. In previous years, they've been able to nullify some of that edge rush by outside screen games and all that sort of stuff. Oh, oh intercepted! It was, it was a hit by Swaysland that knocked that ball forward twice now. The Ravens defense has come up with a serendipitous takeaway. Thanks to either hands on the line or hits in the, the passing game. It's sort of, it's sort of unfortunate for, for you as it's always going to end up on the, on the stat sheet as, as an interception. But, you know, the, the, it was the right pass. Might have been Todd, sorry, on the pass breakup. That it was. Sunshine Lawrence was the intended wide receiver. First down and 10. 12-6. Well, Ravens trail. The they snap it. 
to Moran, but the Ravens cannot pick up this incisive Thunder defense. Paddy just timed that blitz perfect. Look at that. He gets in, disrupts, forces Moran to hesitate, has an outside blitz as well, and just had nowhere to go. And even if it's not part two, Kyle is getting in there real quick as well. There's a lot of the credits to go to the two up front who are just controlling their line of scrimmage and, um, you know, containing their gaps, allowing the linebackers to do their thing. And the Ravens back on the field. They try to throw it quickly. Ooh. They had two receivers open. She throws to the more covered of the two, which was Todd B. Clement. Found some space in behind, though. I like the play call there. As we we're talking about, the blitz has been coming heavy. They've been crowding the line, giving that cover zero look. You know, if you can get a quick pass over the top like that, it's going to do a lot of damage. See, see the thunder faithful there in the crowd, and just the crowd shot we just had. It's a low snap, Whoa. but this play might be blown dead anyway. Flags thrown all across the field. <laughs> Both lines are pointing at each other on that one. So O-line pointing to the D-line and vice versa. Oh, looks like we've got a false start. Illegal snap. Number 83 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains the third down. Take a look at the replay here, the illegal snap. This is the second time it's been called today. Oh, and you can just oh, see there wow. the old, you can't do that. <laughs> Double clutch. <laughs> Once you commit to moving the ball as a center, you got to let it fly. Oh, uh, yeah. In my experience, I only made that mistake once. <laughs> Cheers, got Third down and about 17 here. And Moran right. breaks an ankle tackle, but I like they've been doing all day, unless she's going to make a fool wow. of me. Can't break away from it, but makes about nine yards on pure post contact alone. I just keep those legs moving. We've talked about if you. You know, talk about how they've been swarming and stuff like that, but you don't actually get in there and make the hit. She's, get, she's got the ability to break those tackles. Peterson there holding on to that stallion. And now brings up fourth and 11. And don't reckon is, we're going to see the punt unit. Yeah, this is go for a territory <laughs> for uh, the Ravens. Moves him out wide into tailback. Now we're going to see a flag for delay again. Seven. Delay of game number seven. Five yard penalty. Remains the fourth down. Let's see if. I don't think that's going to change their mind. They're still going to go for it, but. You just hope that whatever play you done signed up, it's got routes deep enough <laughs> to get past the new, the newly formed distance. And play action here for Sharman, but Valich is chasing her down and corrals wow. her to the dirt. Flags down her back on the near side sideline. So just it might be off sides. If it was, that angle doesn't quite see it. Offside, number 83, defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards on the previous spot. It's still the fourth down. Should have backed you, mate. Mm. Newell called me an offside there. And Coach Housen is not happy just quietly. <laughs> All of a sudden, that penalty is returned for the, from the illegal snap. So we're back to fourth and 11. Back to fourth and 11, just a short detour there. Ravens using plenty of hard counts to try and draw them offside. 
Throws off her back foot. Oh. Coming back for it was Karen Christian. Incomplete. I like the play call there. I had the right idea. But Shaman, who's still working on a lot of her throwing mechanics, you know, having to throw off her back foot off there out of necessity. Yeah, it? absolutely. It's very... It's going to be a tough day at the office if that's how she has to try and complete her passes. Well, let's be honest, you've got those, those Thunder linebackers coming in almost untouched like that. That's a scary prospect. Yes, sir. First down and 10 now. And they give it to Liz Pato, who's winding Whoa. up and gets taken down by a form tackle. An old school one of that. and She rolls off her assailant. Which is Brittany Todd. That's a great tackle. Look at that. Scares low, keeps her feet churning. That's an old school tackle right there yes. where they used to teach face masks that across is, the board. That is downhill hitting. <laughs> of course, nowadays it's taught more helmet behind the trunk of the leg or cheek to cheek. Ewers. Cubis. Oh. 10 yards oh, and a first I'm down. Still fighting. I actually checked that. It was a second and six. So it was probably closer to eight yards, regardless. The first down. Great composure by you was there. Had pressure coming into the pocket. Stood calm, stepped into a pass, and delivered it well. Coming back after that. Would be intercept. Well, intercept, I should Nothing would be about it. Their last drive, Ewers throws short underneath the Roberts. The Ravens proving that they can collapse on the football as well. Flags down though, you can see that on the screen. Hold or a block in the back. Twenty on the offense. Holding number twenty on the offense. Ten yard penalty. First down. With the holding at call there, a couple of penalties really started to yeah. you know slide into the game now. We also, the Thunder have also done a good job of keeping Isla Cook quiet. Yeah. It was all over this game a year ago. Offense, defense, played O-line, played it. Was blocking a fullback, tight end, taking carries from both positions. It looks like we might be the... Nope, oh, just reached one of the ball. And defensively was absolutely wrecking shop. Barely said a name here. This afternoon at Redcliffe. Speak of the devil, she puts her under pressure right oh. now. Oh. Cutress misses the tackle. Oh. Roberts has got down the sideline. Moran comes in now to wrap her up, but Roberts has already done the damage. Got the first down. Got the first down for her Griffith Uni Thunder teammates. And that'll set him up just outside the red zone. Ball's on the 24. Another good ball from yours there, under pressure. <laughs> Throws it over the, <laughs> over the lineman's head. And then great uh, yards after catch there by the receiver. Reliable wide receivers. End of the third quarter now. After three, the Thunder. They broke the halftime at deadlock. Thanks to a six-yard receiving touchdown by Casey Cubis via Amanda Ewers. Of course, Patu setting them up into the red zone for that one. Six points separate these two teams now with one quarter left to play here. In the 2019 a Women's Sun Bowl. Yeah, safe to say, so far the game has definitely moved up to the billing. Certainly has. A critical drive here for the Ravens. Need to make a stop here, because if they go down two scores, that's going to be very, very difficult to, to come back from. Got my crowd shots there behind our graphic. 
couple of thunder supporters, a couple of awkward waves. <laughs> <laughs> People who didn't know they were going to be on camera. 12 6, start of the fourth. Eight minutes left in this women's season. And a delay game here. Those are always awkward penalties there, especially coming out of stuff like ends of quarters Whoa. and stuff like that. If you do. Coach Killer. Game number 24. Five yard penalty, still the first down. Generally, you get a warning. Trust in Mark Louis doing that but yeah no it's uh, i've seen a lot this year where it's come out of like change of quarters or coming out of penalties and whatnot mm -hmm. and offenses re-huddling yeah when quite frankly you should know what the play call is <laughs> in any case first and 15 following that delayed game you was looking out a third a touchdown uh, to a stat sheet today but isla cook Whoa. can't take it down she flips it off to lizzie lale Perhaps that wasn't a great idea. They end up losing an extra yard, but flags come in very late from the eastern sideline. Personal foul. Waiting on Mark Louis to get ready to communicate that to us. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That is huge once again. Coach Summerfield would have to be upset with that. Yeah. You've had a massive stop there, huge loss of yards, and now. You just welcome back. It's such a swing of emotions, and that's probably one of the, the biggest part of the penalties that no one talk about there. That you get amped up oh. from making a big play, then all of a sudden you've got to simmer yourself down to a point where you can perform again. Raven showing cover four, and they go underneath. Swaysland went for the hit. If she just kept her eyes up, she might have seen that ball falling into her lap. Those tip passes have to give you as nightmares. Just the split second it's in the air there. Balls at the 14, second and 10. Incomplete pass on first down. Seven minutes and 41 seconds remaining. As they go speed option to the left, you is determined to do this herself! Wow. She has barely touched on route oh. to third touchdown today! That will give them a two possession score here at the top of the fourth. That is the reward for sticking to the speed option, first three quarters, having a couple of those ones where you've, you've made the read, you've made the pitch, so you've had everyone, you know, selling on the pitch person and she's kept it herself and just had a mountain of space there. Yeah, two point Ooh. conversion, unsuccessful. The trend continues. At this point, they might be consider just consider kicking PATs. <laughs> What's the worst that happens? Just look at the determination. She runs with that forward <laughs> lane. <laughs> Gets the job done. 18 6. Now just. Well, the way the Ravens offense is looking right now, I will throw the question out there, is this simple two possession difference too much of a mountain to climb? Short answer is no. <laughs> um, yeah, I think as long as number six is out there, I think, uh, yeah, two scores is not, not a safe distance at this stage. Is it, is it a situation of... It's not, oh, Isla Cook on special teams! Oh, Isla Cook still going, and that Isla Cook has the potential to just run that all the way. We saw it. Her uh, get a touchdown taken off her. I think it was against the Thunder at Kitchener Park. 
where they called it back for a block on the back, which he raced away for 30 yards. Gives the Ravens an excellent field position, though, coming off the back of that score. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of Moran at QB as well. Well, the, this would be the question about Moran. Is it not a matter of if or when? The Thunder trying to keep her wrapped up. Oh. They're doing a good job of it now. So I'm sure the Ravens go to the passing game. Intended to be Clement there. Incomplete. I don't know if we notice here or not, but you just watch off the edge here. And the linebacker goes out to Moran as the pitch person. And then when it's clear that it's a pass, leaves that assignment to then put pressure on the QB. That's excellent. Contain outside edge play. And one of the other significant differences, the blitzing angles this year mm. for the, the Thunder feel a little more cleaner and smarter. I think last year they were just trying to get in the backfield and they were getting caught going in a bit tight. Moran will beat them with speed to the outside. They've straightened up the angles a little more here and produce a little more success. And they're running what possibly might be the same play. This one, the pass is completed to Hayes. Hayes grabs one of her first oh, catches today and she's good. immediately clutching. Well, initially, I thought at her ankle, but now it might be the midsection. And Liz Partu immediately showing concern. Could be a rib. I think Partu came in and got a good one underneath there. Yeah, you might be right there. I bet you were saying before regarding the um, the angles of the edge rush that the Thunder seem to be taking this season. Um, seeing the way that they were running their team session the other night when I was down at their practice, um, Coach Housen has been super, super anal about that in terms of you know players are lining up. Even look, we're talking half a yard, you know, inside or outside where he wants them, he is barking at them and, and you know educating them on that in terms of what, you know how you would take your angle from there. What are you going to do from there? How are you going to properly do? You know, whatever he's called for, and it just does not let it get away at all. Quite frankly, that just sounds like a, a man who's accepted that he has been beaten by possibly the small things hmm. over the last two seasons, and is trying to make sure those small things don't beat him here a third time. And that's no surprise. You look at any documentary about Bill Belichick and how anal is he about O line and wide receiver splits. Yeah. You know, they they all add up to a team's success in the long run. He's still down at the moment. He's one of the most respected players in not only this women's division, but really, quite frankly, women's football in Australia. She still hasn't moved. Trying to help to being assisted now. up now by the trainer and head coach. Pete Davies. Davies finding a home with the, with the Ravens this year after previously having coaching stints with the Saints and Jets, I think, as an assistant. Steelers, if memory serves correctly, all part of the Logan City Satellite clubs. Great sportsmanship by Patrick there going out to check on her and... Mean enough to deliver the hit, nice enough to check on her afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Might type a linebacker. So that's, what the, that's what the sport's about. <laughs> yeah, you saw that. I think we saw it earlier when, when uh, Damien Malloy earlier in the season copped the shot and to the shin and immediately saw the assistance of opposing players. Third down. Bit of a break and play there, giving the lineman a chance to suck in and a bit of air. Oxygen. Why just the lineman, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking from experience. <laughs> Sharman can't Ooh. find the time to pitch this off. Samonte shutting off that pitch play there. I thought that was a good fake. Replay there, just showing that quick Great discipline there. by the Thunder there. 18 to 6, the time starting to become a bit of a factor here for the Ravens, as is the down count. Fourth down here, giving up another possession run now, moving under six minutes. Make the job very difficult. Swayze now checking in on offense. 
They take away Moran early, then they float the pass oh. late. Moran against Patu. She beats Patu this time, gets out of bounds, but more importantly gets the first down. But now possibly disappointingly has a flag on the Ravens sideline. Charming to see what that's for. Taking a page out of Ewers' playbook there on the late pitch. Can be high risk, high reward, those late pitches. A little discussion going on here. Yeah, Barbara Johnson. Talking to Mark Lilly. Two refereeing friends there. Both of them refereed in Gridon Queensland for a long time. Mark Louie now based down in Canberra. If I remember. I think you're right there, yeah. That's correct. Yeah, you know a little thing or two about the nation's capital, mate. No, you're from Tasmania. My apologies. <laughs> Tell you what, mate. Talk, talking him up there. <laughs> I thought there was a stitch-up coming there. I was like... Usually the stitch-up's about you from being from Tasmania. Yeah, enough said. <laughs> Looks like we're about to get a call from all this. Personal foul, hands to the face, the runner maintained continuous held contact to the helmet. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, remains false down. Good news, Moran's keep the ball. <laughs> Bad news is, Moran was deemed to hold on to the face mask and part two there too long. You can do open hand to a would-be tackler. And now the Ravens sideline pick Davies throws in his red flag. This is eligible to be challenged. Oh. The Ravens. The ruling on the field was a personal foul for hands to the face against the runner. The head coach of the Ravens is challenging the ruling. For the first time, we actually have a challenge that can be challenged. We've had a couple of missed challenges. They still cost the time out. You need to really understand the grasp of what you can and can't challenge here under IFAF review rules, or specifically GQ IFAF rule, review rules. This is a penalty, a personal foul, personal foul that would have been 15 yards or more, thus eligible to be challenged. And as you can see on the screens ahead of us now, that's what the folks in the booth, it's Gary Kendall and Joe Goslin, if memory serves correct. They're in charge now to deem whether Moran's contact with Patu here to her face mask is deemed lengthy. At fast motion, it seems relatively clear. Mm. When you slow it down, though, it, uh, to me, it does look like Moran is guilty. Well, I think if we're going back to the, you know, indisputable evidence, that's going to be a tough one, I think. Exactly right. They need to find out. They need to have indisputable evidence that the call was incorrect. This is a penalty you just don't see very often. I can't say I've said it called too often. It's the fact mm, the, the hand going backwards. He's there and it's in a gripping yeah. motion. I'm just glad I'm not in black and white stripes today. <laughs> Wind's picked up to a strong 35 kilometers an hour here. 
Constantinople. Allegedly, according to Mr. Google. I said it could be great, didn't you? After further review, the ruling on the field is reversed by instant replay. No foul for hands to the face. The play stands first down to the Ravens on the 24 yard line. Peter Davey is the first coach today successful with an IR challenge. He not only keeps that time out, but gets to throw the red hanky one more time if he wishes. So that call is taken back. They get the first down and clock is back and running. Ravens down by 12. Miranda quarterback flags already down. She's looking for space, this stingy Thunder defense. They give up a little bit, but still don't break. getting the option here so this likely will be against the Thunder. Offside, number 12 on the defence. Penal five yard penalty remains first down. <laughs> Meadow Lorano there with their first penalty today. Ball is on the far side, hash marks, plenty of space out to the right hand side. The numbers favor the defense that way though. And that's why they'll go to the left, the Ravens that is. They'll pitch this to Clement. Clement breaks the tackle, gets out of bounds. If this was the NFL, the clock would stop here, but we'll continue to run until the Thunder take a timeout, which is right now. Thunder feel like they need to make some adjustments to at least try to make the Ravens take as much time as possible to score a touchdown here. So much as to stop it. But just under five minutes now, four minutes and 59 seconds, 12 points is the difference. The Thunder defending a two score lead here and a chance to grab their first women's title. They'll be joining their men's division in the silverware department. It's incredible to consider that, you know, four years they've been in the competition and to have a, a men's sun bowl and this is the third women's sun bowl they've played in. You know, that's, that's incredible for a startup club. Yeah, usually those clubs go through a horrible period yeah. of being, you know, <laughs> irrelevant when it comes to post-season. Not only have they got a title now, they did it in an upset victory as far as their men's went and now their women's side has you know, stamped their perennial appearances in the postseason and in, this, in the, the big game. Only four years deep into the club's history. Game clock. Please reset the game clock to 5.44. 5.44. Ravens here with a lot more time than they thought they had. 4.59 was the game block. And that's 44 seconds off the mark or 45 seconds off the mark. Keep in mind we've got multiple clocks running here. We've got the <laughs> stadium clock and we've got the stream clock, which are trying to stay in sync with our field clock. Shaman for the end zone, oh. ball's tipped through several oh. hands before eventually finding the Dolphin Stadium turf. That would have been an exciting way for the Ravens to score. Both teams upset with themselves there in terms of not being able to come down with the tip ball. Part two oh. gets the first tip, then it's off Hayes hands. Clement gets one and ultimately Karen Christian had the final dig at it. Now it's second and goal from the six. It's 
the coach for Patrick to start digging deep into the playbook here. Big Clement in the slot, Hayes outside her. Heavy side of the line to the left, and that's the way they'll go. Moran oh. can't grab her balance back after a first cut. Gets taken down for a loss. Uh, down counter flipped the wrong way there. Third down. Couple of big plays coming up here. Eleven yards. That's what separates them from six points. A lot of space the Ravens, out to the right. They come in at the same formation. Patiently, she waits. Christian's oh. got it. Shaman threaded the needle. Got it off behind that pass, and Karen Christian finds herself in the end zone. The Ravens aren't dead yet. And just out of range of Haley Peterson's fingertips. I think they ran a similar play earlier as B. Clement running that out there. She was open. They've come back to that now with Karen Christian in that position. And it leads to six points. This is a situation where the oh. conversion probably doesn't mean too much, but it certainly won't be turned down. It's an untimed down, so Moran runs backwards, is running out of real estate, Ooh. and eventually taken mm -hmm. down hard. Puka Collar underneath, Pato over the top. And guess who was there? <laughs> and again, the the front. Five for the, or so I'll say the front, yeah, front five, front four, for the Thunder doing such a good job with their angles today. Yeah, it's doing an excellent job. And Patrick there, like she hits her gap well, diagnoses the play, and the way she flies to the sideline there was excellent. History is suggests by now, Moran's ripped off a 30 yard run by now. The Thunder have not surrendered the big play. With you saying that, you know what's going to happen next series. <laughs> it's my job to build up. It's the player's job to execute. <laughs> the Thunder, though, in control of their own destiny. Four minutes and 45 seconds to go and a six-point lead. A good time, a bleeding drive here. Could see them walking away with silverware. Back deep for them, Floridas and Peterson. The Ravens taking a long time to discuss this kickoff. You'd be telling your front line to be uh, hyper aware. If they're taking this long to, to make the call, something, something's going on. Also worth noting, Puka Kala on that last play, injured a little bit, now receiving medical attention on the sideline. She's been wonderful here in the second half. Ravens split players evenly. They have known to go five and three. Hayes tries to kick for herself. Gets an awkward bounce oh, and the Ravens have recovered. The Ravens Whoa. have recovered. Hayes hits that beautifully. Bounced off a Thunder front line defender. I think that might have been Lizzie Lale. And then Alex Ahrens pounces on the loose ball. And the Ravens now with 4 minutes and 43 seconds. That shifts the context of time completely. Almost key here for the Ravens as well to control time as well. First down, coming off fresh from a touchdown, stretched out left, Swaysland's got it. And that was a lot of effort there for a two yard <laughs> game.
keeps the clock running, but not really a concern at this time. You certainly don't want to score quickly and then give the, the Thunder too much time to, to go down and score again. Second and eight. So they want to hurry up here. There could be another delay of game coming. They need eight here on second down. Moran blocks two defenders. And here goes Shaman bouncing off Floridas. Oh, wow. And eventually <laughs> taken down after a short gain of two at the most three yards. Seems to get a little bit nervous when the quarterback bounces off a tackle like that because usually there's another lick coming. It's completely irrelevant here. But how about the old talk about how some defenders saying that they're hesitant to hit quarterbacks because they could slide the all sudden quarterbacks. <coughs> Dak Prescott, lower the shoulder and lower the boom. I say yep. defenders say it's a bit of a lose-lose situation in the NFL. I'm no. wondering if that'll end up leading to rule changes in the future. Probably. Just my quick NFL. If it, was, if it involved Tom Brady, it'd be a rule change. <laughs> Third down and six. Oh, Tom, that perfectly, blitz well. Yeah, exactly. A perfectly timed blitz here from the Thunder. They try to get oh, to the outside, though. Contained the rain well there. Maybe grab the yard. Regardless, yeah. it'll be fourth down. Big fourth down. They need four. I don't want to try and guess what's going to happen here. We've already seen the touchdown pass down here, the onside kick. Who knows what they got to sleeve. Maybe Moran at QB. Might be the case. No shaman stays at quarterback. Moran left of her. Swaysland. Or is that Cutrus in the slot? Look at Swaysland. Moran is a QB. Moran was sorry, a QB. You're correct. Oh. She finds some blocking towards the outside. She's got the first got down. Now, gets oh. down the sideline. She's racing here. It's her and Floridas. Floridas oh. takes her down at the one. Wow. What a chase there by Yana Floridas. <laughs> well, you said by this stage, we'd have a 30 yard. There's a 40 yarder for you. And they can't stop Moran wow. from producing at some point or another. But I'll tell you what. As fantastic as Moran was on that, credit to the outside blockers there. Yeah. She had some wonderful blocking on the edge to get to the outside. Look at Hayes there, working on Cubis. Part 2's been an absolute nightmare. This could be the defining drive here for the Thunder. A goal line stand on their one to hold on to the title. Ravens. That is the Ravens' second time out of the half. Obviously not charged for the successful challenge they got earlier. They've got one timeout remaining. Remaining two minutes and 31 seconds left here in the game, but they are one yard away from tying this game up and with a successful conversion, could take the lead. Might I remind everyone, the last time these two teams met, Final score, Ravens 20, <laughs> Thunder 18. <laughs> well, that's right, they said there, overtime. <laughs> could be, it could be. We might have to wait for the men's Sun Bowl. We could be seeing the second women's Sun Bowl heading to overtime. Of course, it was the Jets and the Stingrays four seasons ago, I believe. Nil all at end of regulation. Thunder. Okay. Two yards, I think, actually. No, one yard. This is the goal line stand of all goal line stands. <laughs> First and goal. They give it to Piva. Piva's knees Ooh. down. Might have even lost a yard there. Step one for the Thunder. <laughs> Second and goal, now this time from the two. This might 
run down to the two minute warning. Great work in there by the Thunder. Interior line as well by clogging up those holes. Time out. Two minute warning. There are two minutes left in the game. Two minute warning. Two minutes remaining in the 2019 women's season. This part, oh. there the snap is over the head of Shaman. What became, what was second and goal is third and goal. It was second and goal from the two. Now they're all the way back at the 15. Talked about before the, early, like the importance of those snaps and you know the quarterback exchange, etc. Well, here's a so gut that's check. about the extreme that we're going to see. Well, again, we talked about field uh, field position pressure. Yep. How about just general game and game yep. situation pressure? Well, there's, a, there's certainly field position pressure there. Like as the offense, when you're that close, there is pressure on you to you're expected to convert. Again, if the Thunder can stop this here, and that's a huge bonus for them there on third down. And now look for the pass. Oh. I think that was Isla Cook who looked early. Just to echo John Rowe's thoughts from earlier in this game. Keep running. <laughs> Chelsea quarterback to get it there. That's fourth down now. And you'd argue this is a favorable position for the Thunder. In fact, I'd say that's not even an argument. That's fact. And look fourth who's, down. Look who's just come back on. 15 yards. Moran's now on the field. Shaman back on the field. We're going to be talking about that. Yana Florida's chased him. In women's sundolls to come. Unless the Ravens... Depends what happens here. Could, could have saved them the sundoll. Can get 14 yards here. And make that 19 yards with a likely delay game. Prior to the snap. Delay of game. Number seven on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains the fourth down. They were making substitutions. They were talking about plays. You don't get any extra time despite it being later in the game. You need to get your calls in. You need to execute it on time. And what was already difficult now becomes simply gosh darn hard. Sways land and slot. Hayes outside the numbers. Bobbled snap. They give it. So, wow. Oh, they tried. They didn't go to Moran. They get the huge stop on fourth down. The Thunder. <laughs> Can you believe it? They chased down Moran at the one. And they stopped him four times here. The Ravens only have one timeout. There's one minute remaining. What a stop. I'm a, I'm a little bit baffled by, by the play call, though. I'm not going to lie. As am I. I, I was I'm, expecting a Moran handoff yeah. maybe that's why they went to uh to to Brittany Todd there but it's caught us off surprise there yeah I, I'm a bit <laughs> and taken away from honest. the siren that should have been <laughs> expressed with a thunder getting it done 18-12 Vic victory formation is out <laughs> knees out and now right now on the thunder side they're just trying to contain their excitement until the ball is raised. 43 seconds. The agonizing wait for the runner-up team here. The Thunder. First and goal from the one. <laughs> Chase down from Yana Floridas. But absolute credit has to go to, to Amanda Ewers and, and Kel Housen for what they've done this year and, and how they've prepared this team for this game. Looks like that's it. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's taken them three cracks, but they have overcome the Bayside Ravens. Your 2019 Women's Sunball Champions. That is the end of the game. The Griffith University Thunder. And you can just see yeah. the monkey. How's it going? How's that feel? 
<laughs> I've got no words. <laughs> Honestly, these girls are absolutely amazing, like amazing. And I can't believe that we've done it. So thank you. This is amazing. Yeah, it's a great effort. Uh, I saw the semi-finals and I thought, yeah, this this could be it. And uh, you came out here today and you dominated the game. It was great. Some fantastic passes. And, uh, your D-Lloyd, your running back number nine. It was a great effort by you girls. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Honestly, today goes to our defence. Our defence was the people that won it for us. So congratulations to them. And every single one is amazing. These girls We're are Good. You get in there and you enjoy it, my girl. Yeah, just a quick throw to the sideline there. Good job there from our sideline man, in uh, Glenn Parker, capturing the immediate emotions after a Sun Bowl. You and I can both relate. You have sometimes you can't <laughs> explain the feelings that. Yeah, this team, we've just four years. You know, we, we just had to get better and better, and it was just coming down to our football program we're installing. And I'm super proud of these girls, man. Like this, this is family. Fire oh, no, bro. Fire no, no. no, mate. I, I, I agree with you. I thought this was the one. This was the one. Amanda, what a game. What a game by Amanda Evers. Uh, mate, I've never seen someone just so calm and casual today. She took it to them. Uh, number nine, your defense, your defense was outstanding. It won the game, bro. Great coaching, boy. Um, mate, it, it all comes down. Uh, me and Amanda spoke about it at the beginning of the season, and I said, look, you should take over the head coach role, and I'll float in and just help with the defense. And you know what? She did an amazing job. You know, yeah, mate, I agree with you. It is all about family. Well done. Congratulations. Go enjoy with the team, my friend. Thanks, bro. Yeah, some more on-field interviews there. Kelvin Housen. I know how important this is to him as well. Obviously, he had the head coaching roles there. Did the right thing. Stepped aside. Understand that his attention was going to be split. Trusted Amanda to take on the big role of coaching and playing. And improved dividends. The Ravens, they've tasted defeat in the Sun Bowl for 2015. They got there in their first ever season. Talk about teams that come into the, the league and dominate early. That was with them. They've had victory over the last two seasons. This time, the winners fall on the other side of the ball. A well-earned victory here from the Griffith University Thunder. And for once, Amanda Ewers crying tears of joy so much as disappointment and I think both teams are lining up for their handshakes at the 50. Now it won't be long before we cross back down to Glenn for the post game but gives us an opportunity to wrap up while the two teams are getting ready for their uh, formal handshake on the uh, halfway line. Bolt, you and I both know this game is going to come to the wire. We both know the camps pretty well. We've both gotten to know them over the last couple of seasons. We knew this was an opportunity the Thunder might actually finally get the victory. Yeah, I'm not completely surprised um, that they had the win. And there's nothing against the, the Ravens. I wasn't involved with their preparation this time around. Um, just having done the work with them the last two weeks and just seen how laser focused they have all been and the coaching staff have been. Um, there was just something different about them and the different energy coming into today's game. So, yeah, well, congratulations to them. Um, commiserations to the Ravens. I mean, they're a very, very good football team. As you said, they've been very successful from the first day in the competition. And they'll be back here again. Yeah. Commiserations to the Ravens, as you said, Pete Davis will be better for this experience. Has now got some more experience to his name in the head coaching role. He'll use that to improve in his performance in seasons to come. And no doubt, no doubt will that also apply to the 20 odd ladies dressed in purple today. The three Pete. Not to be this time round, but instead the maiden to the Griffith Uni Thunder. It's hard not to smile when you're looking at the smiles on those faces on the field, those girls. Some of those, most of them I would say, have been part of this team for the, for the past two, two seasons. This has been a championship, three seasons in the making. And you can see there also the mutual respect between two teams. Well, they're shaking hands on the, the 50 there. This is one of those handshakes that takes a little bit longer. Well, we've seen seen these two teams three years in a row now and I'd be willing to suggest very early on in the piece we may see them again next year too. No, we'll see. Obviously the Stingrays will have a, 
lot to say about that. Obviously, I also hear a lot of retirements are happening on, so perhaps there's a bit of a rebuild going on. The, the Wartney Raptors are building to something that might still take a little while to go, but yeah, no surprises if these two team, teams enter as the, uh, the favourite heading into season 2020. Just a recap on the game that was a bit of a slow start, plenty of turnovers, a couple of intercepts there in the game, but eventually... The deadlock was broken when Moran got in for a five-yard touchdown. Later on, the Thunder answered back with a 43-yard pass to Casey Cubis. She would come back again for a second touchdown in the third quarter for six yards. Amanda Yu was responsible for those, both of those passes. And then after an intercept, Amanda Ewers came back and grabbed what would ultimately be the game-winning touchdown with a 14-yard rushing touchdown to steal the game, of course, for the Ravens. Their second touchdown. As you can hear the cheers going on in the background there. Their second touchdown scored by Karen Christian in the end zone to keep this game alive. Moran got that ball all the way to the one. The Thunder defense. Florida started with the stop of the one. They got the stop on second down. Penalties derailed them to third. And God knows how long on ten. And then that got only got expounded there with a with an awkward snap. And the, the Thunder did the rest. They well and truly earn this victory here today at Dolphin Oval. You've seen a lot of the former players for the Ravens now coming down to support their ladies in the time of defeat. Castro Trias, I see Chrissy Torres there, obviously had to take some time out, working on motherhood at the moment. They'll be back before you know it. I certainly going to strengthen the team going into next year too. Like they're very, very key parts of this this team that you know missing this year that I think you know has been forgotten about in this process. You see them there. Cotras was outstanding this season, if you ask me. Put together a really good 2019 season. Brittany Todd always reliable. Swaysland continues to improve. You see Clement transform to a wide receiver, a very effective player out wide now. They're starting a career at D line. I tell you what. That Thunder team, they've improved with every loss. Liz Part 2, an absolute machine, no matter where you put her. You was pure heart today. Absolutely. Look, I think uh, Petubi moved to running back at the start of the second half really, really set the tone, I think, for the Thunder and really changed the momentum of this game up until then, obviously, we had Florida's you know, tackle at the one and a half, which we even said at the time, is that going to be a, a Sun Bowl winning play? And, well, it turns out it was. Cubis. You know, it's, it's, it's weird. She scored two touchdowns, but yet <laughs> you, you want to talk about the team effort there. Yeah. You know, she was Jenny on the spot when you needed her. Well, exactly. How do you defend her? <laughs> exactly right. Both the teams now starting to compose their emotions just a little bit as they work their way to the presentation area. I think you always thought she might have missed the... Uh Mr. Gatorade bath, um, <laughs> being the fact that she was a player and, and on the field, but no, they made sure they got her in the huddle. <laughs> well deserved there. So how about this Griffith University football program? Became the first team not named the Stingrays to win the men's title last year for the first time in over a decade. A lot of people would have been picking teams like the Rhinos, the Ravens, you know, the Cougars at times, the Wildcats earlier in the decade. But alas, it was this young team that made history last year, and now their women's side, they get their turn. You can see them holding up their celebratory Thor Hammer there, which is often awarded to who the coaches decide as team MVP for that game. And this one handed to Liz Patu. We'll see if the game MVP falls that way as well. Is he trying? Are we in? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're down on the sideline with the two teams for the uh, women's Sun Bowl. I uh, hope you got some of that footage where we got out on the field there in amongst the Thunder and uh, the coach and quarterback, Amanda Evers, tonight. Uh, and, of course, Coach Cal. We got out there we're trying to get you a little bit of footage in the, at the spur of the moment, in the heat of the moment, with the uh, Sun Bowl winning Thunder girls. They're pretty excited out here, so we're going to get the start of the... Um, Formal proceedings, if I could possibly speak to the coach of the Bayside Ravens, please. That would be lovely. Coach Davies, our first year at the Hell. Well done, coach. Good to see you back in the saddle. That was a tough one, but it was close. Uh, the girls toughened up. 
they had a good game there, but they come up against a pretty good defence today. But um, I thought, yeah, pretty close, mate. I thought maybe that was going to go to overtime. Yeah, we were hopeful. Um, full credit to the Thunder defence holding us out at the one-yard line. Uh, and that was the game there and there. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I, I, I agree with it completely. The, the Thunder D was what, uh, what won it today. Yeah, OK, points on the boards is all the math mathematical game. But yeah, that D was pretty amazing on that yard line. But you know what? I thought uh, with uh, K-Train there in the moment, last while we were there, we'll go, we're heading to overtime, but um, uh, we'll a great year though, mate, a great year. Well done, and congratulations for your team. Yeah, couldn't be prouder of the girls. We, we've come a long way with limited numbers this year, and um, rookies in the backfield and that sort of thing. So very proud, could not be prouder of them. Absolutely, and so you should be. They're a great bunch of girls, yeah? yeah. Well, next year's the year. Yeah. Bigger Thanks, and better. Mark. Well done, Pete. Great job. And if I could possibly get the... Head coach of the Thunder, Amanda Evans. Congratulations, girl. Thank you. Thank Good to see you back on the field and uh, ordering people around. I know that's what you like to do. No, no it's a team Tinko education. Yeah, I, I know that. I know that. But um, it was, I, I had a little chat with Coach Kel about how you do, uh, got things done this year and uh, giving you a little bit of freedom, if you want to call it that. Uh, and, uh, the, and the girls, and you know, um, obviously. What a great job your girls did today, yeah? Honestly, it's a team effort. Um, nothing that we do doesn't go without everybody's input. Um, I mean, honestly, Kel is somebody that has set this team up. He's been doing this for years and years and years, and he has been able to take me under his wing the last four years to help me get to where I am. Um, honestly, I may stay the title, but it's a team effort between the two of us. Um, nothing we do could have been done without the two of us, in all honesty. So massive kudos to Kel for all the work he's done this year. So, um. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you probably know, Kel and I go back a long way. And of course, with the New Zealand uh, a relationship that we have, everything's about whānau and family. And he's always pushed that with your team right from the very first down of uh, Thunder. Uh, and it's quite obvious that you guys are a wonderful team and you, you all do it, not on your shoulders, but on each shoulder. And what a fantastic uh, touch for Coach uh, to award uh, the hammer of the day for your wonderful defence. What a great effort, yeah? Oh, 100%. Um, we've said years and years and in is that defence wins championships and honestly, they put it on show today. So congratulations to our defence. Um, honestly, like, you know, you, you talk about family and in, in all honesty, this year from the beginning always felt right. Um, things were just different. Um, the girls bought in and it wasn't just that they bought in to come and play. We've got a lot of senior um, players. We've even got players in their second year that have really stepped up, like you know our captains throughout the year, that have really driven that family orientation. They've wanted to be better not only for themselves but for the team and, and that's what I think to me in all honesty has gotten us the season that we've had. We started off right and we've really driven it all the way home. So it's to each and every single one one of these girls is the reason why we're here, not me, not Kel. We help, but these girls are the reason why we've worked so hard. i, I got to admit, Amanda, you're starting to sound like a captain and a coach right there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're saying all the right things, I, I, and it's obvious. It's obvious that you girls have all pulled together and, and you know, become a family. I mean, the effort I've, I've watched this year from a long, long way away, uh, I've, I've noticed that the way you guys have formed a, a fantastic relationship, and today was evident, and coming up against an unbelievable Ravens team. Uh, well done, uh, and um, we'll talk to you a little bit later as well. Thank you. Can I just quickly say, like, I mean, this year has been phenomenal, and the Ravens, um, you guys, as per usual, every single time we play you, we play epic. Um, I can't... Some days I love hugs, other days not so much, but you guys bring it every time and you make us be better. So thank you for the effort. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So thank you. Yeah, well, well spoken. Um, Coach uh, Kel or, or Amanda, if you would like to grab the winner's medals from uh, a GQ executive, I'll just take a little time and I'll speak to the captain, one of the captains of the Ravens, if that is okay. Hey. Hey, Chrissy, good to see you again. It's been a while. Uh, tough one, yeah? Phys physically as well. Uh, you know, I know that last at uh, the semis, I watched that and I knew there was something going on. Um, but as usual, you didn't tell me, uh, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, um, you, you stepped up again and uh, the silent assassin over here, she had a pretty good game for, you know, for Midget. She's all right, isn't she? Yeah. You went hard and your you D played really, really well. I'll be honest, uh, it was a tough game and I, I thought it was going to overtime. I was sitting in the stand speaking to one of my great friends and said, this is going to overtime. Uh, they're going to score here. Um, yeah, what a great game though. It was great to watch, but 
not so much for you, but but be honest, what a great game of well, footy, eh? Don't you think? I've got to, I've got to disagree with you. That was one of the best games we've yeah. played all season, and that's thanks to you, ladies. That was amazing. Well, well done, and congratulations. Um, we are upset. We wanted it. We're now in the position you guys have been, so it's only fair. Um, and we're hurting, but please don't take our tears as anything, but congratulations to you. I have a team here. We were low in numbers, but big in heart. We're injured, we're sore, and we fought, and we only got beaten by one touchdown. I'm going to remember this season not for the loss, but for that win. Um, congratulations, team. I'm extremely proud of you. Big thank you to our coaches, our support staff, people who keep me stuck together. Um, really appreciate it and thanks for putting um, yet another year of faith into me as your leader. Love you guys all the way. Thank you. Yeah, well said, Christy, because I tell you what, that's exactly what I saw um, on live stream week in, week out, was these two teams fighting and fighting and fighting. And I've never seen a Ravens team that doesn't fight, but you girls this year, that was quite a fight. It really, really did with lower numbers, and, but not lacking in heart. Amazing heart. Build on it, build on it. Yeah, first year for a lot of you guys uh, doing what you're doing. You know, so keep it up and uh, come back next year bigger and better. Congratulations on a fantastic season. If I could have one of the uh, winning captains out here, it would be lovely from Thunder. Congratulations. Yet another fantastic game. Um, what I saw, uh, yeah, you, you run, wow, you, you really run with, with meaning. And, uh, and I mean that, you do. You, you're, 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 you punish people and you mean it. And on defence, yeah, not too many around that don't go as hard as you. Uh, it was a great game of footy. Well played both ways. Uh, and leading by example, very important, yeah? What do you think of your team today? Um, first off, I would like to give thanks for to Lord Heavenly Father um, and also to my family and our families, your girls' families, you know, friends that have supported us um, throughout this whole season. Um, I run the way I run because I've got my sisters actually backing me up, you know. I wouldn't be able to do it without them. Um, this is an awesome bunch of girls, you know, I've loved every minute of it. Like we've had our ups and downs and stuff all season, but, you know, we, we came together at the end, our coaches, our staff, our support staff as well, you know, thank you so much. And our whole club as well, you know, to our club, thank you so much for that. Um, Ravens, it was a tough game, you know. You guys made me want to actually run harder. You make our girls work twice as hard just to get that and earn that win as well. I do thank you for your efforts as well. Um, yeah, I, I love playing you guys. You guys are a challenge. So, yeah, awesome work. Very well said. Uh, well done to yourself and to your team. And the next presentation we're going to make is for the MVP of Sunbowl 2019. This one was not a very easy one for the crew upstairs. Uh, there were some outstanding efforts on both teams. Uh, given that we were not going to make any decision until the final play. Uh, but it is a great pleasure and an unusual event to award not only to a great player, a great captain, a great coach. <laughs> From the Thunder, number 24, Amanda Evers. Yeah, um, thank you. I personally like I treasure this, but I don't believe I deserve this. This definitely goes to the defense and the whole team, but thank you. Um, no words, thank you. Oh, great save, Amanda. Um, and the very last thing we have to do today for the ladies' division, correction, women's division, 2019, can we please have the captains of Thunder out to receive the trophy from the president of Queensland Gridiron? or Gridiron Queensland, my apologies. Your 2019 champions, Griffith Thunder.
Ladies and gentlemen, that winds up the uh, formal proceedings for the women's division. Uh, the Thunder out playing the uh, Bayside Ravens in the final. A close game and the trophy goes back to Griffith. Coming up very soon at 6 p.m. kickoff is the men's. We have again the Bayside Ravens and they'll be playing the Brisbane Rhinos in the men's division. That should be a rip-roaring event. So everybody on live stream, welcome back when you come back. We will be back very, very shortly with the men's division. We'll see you soon. Bye from Redcliffe for now. Get him up, get him up. Get him up, get him up. Funny how you choose and pick your battles, dude. Keep saying you number one, but I'm on top. Yo, it's done. Dropping stuff like napalm. Fake rappers think they so strong. Versus full of hype and always ready for a fight. Spontaneous, what? magnanimous, what? cause they can't get close enough to run with us. If you want to battle, get it hard, yeah. get it raw. No yeah. emotions, I shake you until your chains fall off. What? Large, in charge, I set the bar high. You running with the big boys now, get up, don't cry. <laughs>